The steroid era of baseball took place from the late 1980s through the early 2000s, where home runs increased to record levels. Mark McGuire beat Sammy Sosa in a battle for the single-season home run record in 1998. Just three years later, Barry Bonds surpassed both of them, mashing 73 dingers in 2001. In a time where guys were hitting 50, 60, and 70 home runs a season, many players were overlooked, including when they eventually made it to the Hall of Fame ballot. This video will highlight some of the most underappreciated hitters that played during this time. My intentions are not to speculate on who was or wasn't taking PEDs, but rather to appreciate other great players. Today, I'll be highlighting 11 players from this era. Make sure to leave a comment if there are any players that I didn't discuss today, because there are plenty of others deserving to be in this conversation. As always, if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at camp23 underscore YT and hit the bell to enable all notifications so you don't miss any any future Camp 23 videos. Tim Salmon was an Angels lifer. He spent 14 years with the California, Anaheim, and Los Angeles Angels. As a rookie in 1993, he batted 283, hit 31 homers, and drove in 95 en route to winning Rookie of the Year honors. In 1995, Salmon set many career highs, including a 6.6 .6 war, a 330 average, 34 homers, and a 165 OPS+. He won a Silver Slugger and finished 7th in MVP voting. Salmon was a key contributor in the 2002 World Series against the Giants. He went 4 for 4 and hit two clutch homers in Game 2. The first gave his team a three-run lead, and the second was a go-ahead two-run shot in the eighth inning. The Angels went on to win their first title in franchise history. Salmon hit 30 homers in a single season on five separate occasions. From 1993 to 1998, he averaged 30 homers and 98 RBIs a season. He also batted 297 with a fantastic 140 OPS+, meaning he was 40% better than the league average hitter. Those are excellent numbers, yet he never made an all-star team. Salmon had a lifetime 40.6 war, batted 282, drove in 1,016 runs, posted a 128 OPS+, plus, and fell just one homer shy of 300 for his career. Before Mike Trout, Salmon was the Angels' all-time leader in this category. David Justice spent the first eight years of his career with the Atlanta Braves. Much like Salmon, Justice made a substantial impact as a rookie. He had 28 homers, drove in 78, and posted a 143 OPS+. He received MVP votes and was named Rookie of the Year. In 1993, Justice had possibly his greatest season. He had 40 homers, drove in a career-high 120 runs, made his first All-Star team, won his first Silver Slugger, and placed third in MVP voting. In 1997, Justice was an MVP candidate while playing for the Cleveland Indians. He batted a career-high 329, hit 33 homers, and drove in 101. He made his third and final All-Star team, won his second Silver Slugger, and placed fifth in MVP voting. Justice won the 1995 World Series with the Braves, and in 2000, he was named ALCS MVP while helping the Yankees win the World Series. Justice played his final big league season with the Moneyball Oakland Athletics in 2002. According to their philosophy, the A's made acquiring guys who could get on base a top priority. With a 376 on on-base percentage in 2002, Justice was exactly what the doctor ordered. He finished his career with 40.6 war, a 279 batting average, a 378 on base percentage, 305 homers, 1017 RBIs, and a 129 OPS+. Mark Grace's name has been frequently mentioned in the comments, and for good reason. A career 303 hitter, he was a hitting machine for 16 years spent with the Cubs and Diamondbacks. He also rarely struck out, with 433 more walks than Ks in his career. This combined with his defensive abilities made him a great all-around first baseman. In a five-year run from 1992 to 1996, he won four Gold Glove Awards. In that same stretch, he batted 318 with a 128 OPS+. Grace made three career All-Star teams, and 1995 was the best of the bunch. He batted 326, hit 16 homers, drove in 92, led the league with 51 doubles, posted a 142 OPS+, and walked 19 more times than he struck out. He set career highs in doubles, slugging, OPS, OPS+, total bases, and war. He won his third gold glove and placed 13th in MVP voting. Sammy Sosa was Grace's teammate for nine years. Sosa hit over 60 homers in back-to-back -back seasons in 1998 and 1999. Good luck trying to get the recognition you deserve while playing alongside this level of offense. As a 37-year-old, Grace was finally able to win a World Series with the Diamondbacks in 2001. He was productive throughout their championship run and played just two more seasons before retiring in 2003. Grace finished his career with 2,445 hits, an impressive number that ranks higher than Hall of Famers Jim Tomey, Barry Larkin, Jeff Bagwell, and his former teammate Ryan Sandberg. 
Fun fact, between the 1990 and 1999 seasons, Mark Grace tallied 1,754 hits, the most of any player in that decade. However, in his first year of Hall of Fame eligibility, Grace received just 4.1% of the votes, shy of the 5% minimum to stay on the ballot. Steve Finley was an incredibly well-rounded ball player. He hit 304 homers and stole 320 bases in his 19-year career. He was also amazing on defense, winning five gold gloves as a center fielder. Finley hit his stride during his 30s. From 1996 to 2004, his ages 31 to 39 seasons, he batted 274 and averaged 26 homers, 87 RBIs, 30 doubles, and a 112 OPS plus, all while playing stellar defense in center field. The power speed threat was on full display during his 1996 season. 84 extra base hits is no joke. He hit 30 homers, stole 22 bases, and won his second consecutive gold glove. He set career highs in batting average, hits, doubles, total bases, OPS plus, and war. He finished 10th in MVP voting, the highest of his career. Finley played alongside Mark Grace on the 2001 Diamondbacks team that won the World Series. Another parallel between the two players is a similar number of hits. Finley finished his career with 2,548, and Grace with 2,445. Even their career war is comparable, with Finley at 44.2 and Grace at 46.4. Bernie Williams, like Finley, was great on both sides of the ball. However, Williams was a much better hitter. From 1995 to 2002, he batted 321 while averaging 24 homers and 102 RBIs a season. He was 42% better than league average according to OPS+. In this same stretch, he won four consecutive gold gloves from 1997 to 2000 and was an all-star in five consecutive seasons from 1997 to 2001. He found success in his first World Series run with the Yankees in 1996. He was named ALCS MVP against the Orioles, hitting two homers, driving in six, and batting 474. He won four rings with the Yankees dynasty of the 90s. Currently, Bernie is third all-time on the postseason home run leaderboard, only behind Manny Ramirez and Jose Altuve. In 1990, he batted 339 and won the batting title. In just 128 games, he tallied 169 hits and drove in 97 runs. He set career highs in slugging, OPS, and OPS+. Williams made his second All-Star team, won his second gold glove, and placed seventh in MVP voting. In both 1999 and 2002, he recorded 200 or more hits. In 2000, he set career highs in homers and RBIs, with 30 and 121 respectively. Williams finished his career with 49.6 war, a 297 average, 2,336 hits, 287 homers, 147 stolen bases, and a 125 OPS+. In his first year of Hall of Fame eligibility, he received 9.6% of the votes and fell off the ballot entirely the following year. In 1990, Matt Williams earned the everyday gig at third base and hit the ground running. He made his first all-star team and led the league with 122 RBIs. He won his first silver slugger and finished sixth in MVP voting. Williams was a dangerous hitter throughout his career, but his defense at third base is what made him exceptional. He won his first gold glove in 1991, all while hitting 34 homers and driving in 98. 1993 to 1996 was his four-year peak. In 93 and 94, he went back-to-back -back seasons winning both the Gold Glove and Silver Slugger awards and made three consecutive All-Star teams from 94 to 96. In a strike-shortened season, he led the league with 43 homers in just 112 games. If the season had been played out, he could have approached the single-season home run record held by Roger Maris at the time. He made a second All-Star appearance and won both the Gold Glove and Silver Slugger awards. In MVP voting, he was the runner-up to Jeff Bagwell. In 1999, Williams set career highs in hits, doubles, RBIs, and total bases. He made his fifth All-Star team and finished third in MVP voting, behind Chipper Jones and Jeff Bagwell. Like Finley and Grace, Williams won his lone World Series with the Diamondbacks in 2001. He finished his career with 46.6 war, 1,878 hits, 378 homers, 1,218 RBIs, and a 113 OPS+. He won four gold gloves, four silver sluggers, and made five all-star teams.
Moises Alou played 17 MLB seasons and spent a majority of that time as a corner outfielder. In 1992, he finished runner-up in Rookie of the Year voting, and two years later, he was a first-time All-Star. In the strike-shortened 1994 season with the Expos, he tallied 143 hits in just 107 games. He also batted 339 with a 153 OPS+. He won his first Silver Slugger and placed third in MVP voting behind Jeff Bagwell and Matt Williams. Several years later with the Marlins in 1997, Alou was an All-Star again, and this time had the opportunity to win the World Series. After the season, he left to join the Houston Astros and had a career year. In 1998, he batted 312, hit 38 homers, drove in 124, and posted a 157 OPS+. He set career highs in hits, walks, RBIs, OPS+, total bases, and war. Alou made his third All-Star team, won his second Silver Slugger, and finished third in MVP voting behind Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. After missing 1999 due to injury, the years 2000 and 2001 marked a return to elite form. In 2000, he batted 355 with a 151 OPS+. He set career highs in average, on-base percentage, slugging, and OPS. Moises was a great hitter as a 37 and 38 year old slugger. He was an all-star in both seasons. In 2004, he nearly hit 40 homers and drove in 100 for the fifth time in his career. From 2000 to 2008, ages 33 to 41, he batted 310. He finished his career with nearly 40 war, a 303 average, 2,134 hits, 332 homers, 1,287 RBIs, and a 128 OPS+. Garrett Anderson spent 15 of his 17 big league seasons with the Angels. He and Tim Salmon were teammates for 13 years. In 1995, Garrett finished runner-up in Rookie of the Year voting. From 1996 to 2003, an eight-year span, he averaged 188 hits, 22 homers, and 100 RBIs a year, all while batting 298. In 2002, Anderson had arguably his finest season. He batted 306, hit 29 dingers, drove in 123, led the league with 56 doubles, and posted a 127 OPS+. He made his first All-Star team, won his first Silver Slugger, and placed fourth in MVP voting, a career high. Garrett came up clutch in the winner-take-all Game 7 of the 2002 World Series. His three-run double put the team up 4-1, and that is where the score would stay. The Halos would not have won it all without Tim Salmon and Garrett Anderson. On August 21st, 2007, Anderson went 4 for 6 and set a club record with 10 RBIs. He is one of just 15 players in baseball history to drive in 10 or more runs in a single game. He finished his career with a 293 average, 2,529 hits, 287 homers, and 1,365 RBIs. For comparison, he's 19 hits behind Steve Finley and 84 ahead of Mark Grace on the all-time leaderboard. Bobby Abreu has a case to be considered the most underrated on this list. From 1998 to 2006, a nine-year stretch, he batted 305 with a 416 on base percentage, 22 homers, 95 RBIs, 29 stolen bases, 109 walks, and a 139 OPS plus a season. In 2001, Abreu hit 31 homers and stole 36 bags, joining the 30-30 club for the first time. In a season where he didn't make the All-Star team, the only recognition he received was a 16th place finish in MVP voting. The following season, he led the league with 50 doubles, posted a career-high 151 OPS+, and once again did not make the All-Star team. In 2004, he hit 30 homers and stole 40 bases. Abreu joined the 30-30 club for the second time of his career. He is one of just 14 players to accomplish this feat more than once. He walked 11 more times than he struck out and posted a 145 OPS+. At age 30, he made his first All-Star appearance, won a Silver Slugger, and placed 23rd in MVP voting. In 2005, Bobby made his second and final All-Star appearance, placed 14th in MVP voting, and won a Gold Glove as a right fielder. Abreu was an incredibly well-rounded offensive threat throughout his career. He walked 100 times or more in eight consecutive seasons, which ties him with Frank Thomas for the most in MLB history. From 1999 to 2011, a 13-year stretch, he stole an average of 28 bases a season. He drove in 100 runs or more eight times, seven of which came in consecutive seasons from 2003 to 2009. For his career, he batted 291 with 288 homers, 400 stolen bases, 2,470 hits, 1,363 RBIs, and a 128 OPS+. His 60.2 war is slightly higher than another right fielder many believe to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, Ichiro Suzuki. 
War isn't everything, but Bobby Abreu needs to be strongly considered for the Hall of Fame. In 2023, his fourth year on the ballot, he garnered 15.4% of the votes. Sean Green was an incredible slugger in the late 90s and early 2000s. In 1998, he put together the first 30-30 season in Blue Jays history. He had 35 homers and stole 35 bases. Green followed this up with an even greater season in 1999. He batted 309, hit 42 homers, drove in 123, and posted a 144 OPS+. He led the league with 45 doubles and 361 total bases. He made his first All-Star team, won both the Silver Slugger and Gold Glove awards as a right fielder, and placed ninth in MVP voting. With the Dodgers in 2001, Green elevated his game to new heights. He batted 297, mashed 49 homers, drove in 125, stole 20 bases, and posted a 154 OPS+. He set career highs in homers, RBIs, slugging, OPS+, and total bases. In a year where he didn't make the All-Star team, he placed 6th in MVP voting. That year, Barry Bonds won the award and set the single-season home run record, a feat that overshadowed Green and many others. On May 23, 2002, Green had a game for the ages. He hit four home runs, becoming one of only 18 players to accomplish this feat. He went 6-for-6 six six and set an MLB record with 19 total bases in a single game. No one has matched it since. He made the All-Star team, reached the 40-homer mark for the third time of his career, and placed fifth in MVP voting. Sean Green has an impressive career resume, especially considering he retired after his age 34 season. A 283 average, 2003 hits, 328 homers, 1,070 RBIs, and a 120 OPS+. Lance Berkman is one of the most underappreciated switch hitters in baseball history. Throughout his 15-year career, he was incredibly productive offensively. On average from 2001 to 2008, he batted 304 with 33 homers, 110 RBIs, and a 151 OPS+. With the Houston Astros, he was a member of an amazing group referred to as the Killer Bees, which included Berkman, Jeff Bagwell, and Craig Biggio. Derek Bell and Sean Barry were two of the original members, but both players left before he earned his Killer Bee status. In 2001, he set a record for most doubles in a single season by a switch hitter, with 55. Brian Roberts in 2009 would surpass it, but Berkman still holds the National League record. He set career highs in hits, doubles, average, OPS, and total bases. He made his first All-Star team and placed fifth in MVP voting. The following year, he hit 42 dingers and led the league with 128 RBIs. He placed a career-high third in MVP voting behind Barry Bonds and Albert Pujols. In 2006, Berkman mashed 45 homers, a feat that ties him with 1999 Chipper Jones for third on the single-season home run leaderboard among switch hitters. The only player ahead of him is Mickey Mantle. In MVP voting, Berkman placed third behind Ryan Howard and Albert Pujols. 2008 was arguably his greatest season. Berkman's 6.9 war was a career high. He led the league with 46 doubles and was 60% better than league average according to OPS+. He was an all-star and placed fifth in MVP voting. Even as a 35-year-old veteran with the Cardinals, he was an elite slugger. He made his sixth and final all-star team and placed seventh in MVP voting. His clutch hitting made the difference in the 2011 World Series against the Rangers. Down to their final out in Game 6, Berkman hit a game-tying single. They went on to win the Fall Classic in his last season as a full-time player. Berkman was incredible in 39 career World Series at-bats, hitting 410. Berkman finished with 52 career war, a 293 average, 366 homers, 1,905 hits, 1,234 RBIs, and a 144 OPS+. It's not a perfect comparison, but in over 500 less games, Berkman nearly matched David Ortiz in war. His triple slash numbers are all higher than Big Poppy, a first ballot Hall of Fame designated hitter. Berkman spent his career as an outfielder and first baseman. He was on the Hall of Fame ballot for one year and only garnered 1.2% of the votes. There are so many other players that were overlooked during the steroid era. Of the players we discussed today, let me know in the comments down below who you think has the best chance of getting into the Hall of Fame. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.